of those weeks. Or how many's had one of those days? Mornings. It's funny, this morning when Tanner and August got here, I went out and said, how y'all doing? And Tanner said, oh, we're doing good. He said, it was a bad night last night. I said, it was. He said, yeah. And August said, he went to bed mad and he woke up mad. I thought, hmm. <laughs> well, at least he made it. <laughs> Anybody ever, ever had one of those times where you just need to reset? Anybody ever? We, 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 we reset our computers because they get clogged up. We reset our phones because they get clogged up with too much information just coming through all the time. And so they tell us that the only way that a good computer or a good phone, the smartphones, is going to work right is if you update them. Come on, somebody. And, Listen, my mom lives in southeast Oklahoma, and she likes these smartphones and because she can see us on FaceTime and she can see Facebook and all this and, and that. And about three months will run around, and she'll say, it's not doing anything. I said, Mom, you have to update it. <laughs> well, how do I do that? I said, you have to plug it in to a charge, to a source. I'm going somewhere now. To a source that's got some energy. And then you got to get on Wi-Fi and connect. And then you got to turn it off, not turn it off, but, but uh, clear the screen and set it down. So, 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 and, and, and you, have to, you have to update this phone. If you don't, it doesn't work properly. Don't you know that, that, that even as us, as a human body, we have to update. It's a little chilly in here. Can we? We have to update. Yeah. Come on. Come on. We have to keep our minds updated. Yeah. We got to keep yeah. our minds unclogged with all the crazy stuff going on. Yeah. And I want to go a step further this morning because we start uh, talking about reset. We're going to start talking about reset on a lot of different things. And we're going to uh, take this and throw this into our Tuesday night class at 7 o'clock, and we will get in just a little bit uh, uh, more in depth in the teaching of it uh, because up here I get to preach. But we have to learn to reset. Uh, I remember it was last year, probably about May, April or May of last year, and as we was going through all the uh, uh, first uh, pandemic of the COVID and and. Uh, uh, all the restrictions and things coming on. And uh, uh, last year I was even talking about uh, that God has taken the church through a hard reset. And uh, so I haven't never really done anything with it, and God was speaking to me uh, last week, and he was talking about reset because I was going through some stuff. Anybody just go through some personal stuff? Or, 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 or should I say private stuff? Because sometimes we deal with private things that nobody gets the opportunity to hear or deal with, but we're dealing with them. And then sometimes they get to the place that if we do not handle these things, they will handle us. Amen. If you don't take care of it, it will take care of you. So that's why we have got to take care of it with the Word of God. And so this morning, I got a few scriptures. I want you to go with me this morning. How many brought their Bibles? Yes. Amen. Stand up and open your Bible to Romans, if you would, this morning. Romans chapter 8, verse number 5. I'm also going to go to Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1 and 2. So if you have your Bibles, remember, in this month of March, what we're going to do is we're going to bring our Bibles with us for the whole month of March, you can bring your smartphones and 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 all of that, but uh, we want to get back to bringing our Bibles. Romans chapter eight, verse number five. Are you there? Yeah. <clears throat> the New King James Version says it like this: For those who live according to the flesh, hang on. 
Look at your neighbor. Look at your other neighbor. Say, he's going to talk to you. Look behind you. Smile at him. (laughs) Tell the ones behind you, I'm going to duck every now and then so he hits you. Listen, I'm sure none of us live according to the flesh. I mean, when we got saved, I mean, we're all just, I mean, we don't have fleshly moments, do we? That's probably the Baptist church down the road. Okay. For those, Romans 8 and 5, I want you to mark this down. If you got your Bibles, I mean, I mean, I baited y'all real good. I talked y'all into bringing y'all's Bible. Now I'm going to make you mark in it, and every time you open it up, it's just going to reach out and go, pow. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on things of the flesh. So if you live according to the flesh, your mind's going to be set on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their minds. Set the things of the Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, reset. Reset. Look at your other neighbor and say, reset. Reset. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. I'm going to wait on you to get there. I want to make sure you get there. Amen. If you ain't got a pen to write write or mark this down, borrow your neighbors. Amen. And uh, mark this down. Remember... Remember, if you didn't get the memo, the whole month of March, we're bringing the Bibles. Look at your neighbor and say, (laughs) B-O-B. Now that we're saved, that's bring your own Bible, Russ. (laughs) Praise God. Colossians 3, 1, and 2. If you didn't bring your Bible this morning, pull your phone out and look at it and mark it down. Colossians 3, 1, and 2. Are you there? If then you were raised with Christ, look at your neighbor and say, I'm raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ is. Christ is not under your feet. The devil is. He's not below. He's up above. If, if you then are raised with Christ, set those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Yes. Set your mind, look at your neighbor and say, set your mind, set your mind. on things above yes. and not on things of the earth. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for your powerful word. God, you began to move in this place, stir in this place. Heavenly Father, Lord, began to move all over this place from the top of this building to the bottom, from the side to the side and the front to the back. Heavenly Father, you leave nobody or nothing undone. And Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord, that you begin to move. Heavenly Father, and you break change at this moment right now. Lord, the things that the enemy is dividing with. Lord, the cunningness that the enemy is trying to come in with. Heavenly Father, the past that he's trying to bring up. Lord, all all the things that he's trying to stir up. He's trying to make it about us, and it's never been about us because that's what flesh is, but it's been about the Spirit. Father began to move in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. (laughs) Romans chapter 8 teaches us a lot of things. And the Apostle Paul is talking to the Roman church while he is under house arrest. Now, he's not walking the streets, and he's not putting up a big tent, and he ain't uh, on Facebook, and he ain't on Twitter, and he ain't got all of these fancy things, and, and, and he's not trying to invite people to come to church so they can come in and sit in the building. He said, I must need go to Rome because there it is. If I can get to Rome, get to Rome, the Bible says then there he knows that the word will get out because Rome was a little bitty small empire. I mean, nobody could even believe that Rome had even done what they had done. 
It was just, I, 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 I mean, nobody would have ever expected Rome to become what it was. There's no way. How is Rome going to be able to rule the whole world? It's because Rome decided, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build this empire, but we can't get to everybody, so let's make ambassadors, and let's send them out to each place. And as they begin to speak, it's just like the king is speaking. Woo. Paul said that we are what? Ambassadors of Christ. So now, just as we're speaking, it's just like Christ himself was speaking because he's living inside of us. But what happens is a lot of times is we get clogged up with information. Anybody ever been clogged up with information? I mean, I mean, it's just like you, you, you just can't think, and it's just like, man, I just need to go to my bedroom. I need to shut the door. I, I, just, I just need peace and quiet. Turn the music down. Leave me alone. Let me think about this. There's been times sometimes when I just have to get, just, just, just go in my office and shut the door and just think. Sometimes and just, just think about this. Because, because a lot of times what happens is if we're not going through the process to understand who we really are, then these things come in, and if we start thinking like the flesh, we start thinking this is all about us. Anybody ever go through something just and just think, man, it's just, I just devils just don't like me. And you're giving yourself so much credit like you're so bad to the bone. Uh-oh, can I just preach down here for a minute? And you're giving yourself so much credit like, I mean, uh, I mean, I, 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 I mean, you, you just, just like you could tear hell up. And that's why, that's why he's coming against you. <laughs> Some of y'all is thinking like, dude, you going somewhere with this? <laughs> no, what happens is it, 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 uh, it all of a sudden our thinking is all about us and it all becomes about us, all about what we <laughs> <clears throat> we didn't get about what somebody said about us, what somebody thinks about us, and still yet we'll make these real cool Facebook posts. I don't care what anybody thinks about me. And still yet we'll go through the day, and I mean just thinking all this stuff is just clogging our mind. But see, Facebook, we can post it out there and make people think that we're Uh oh. Look at your neighbor and say, reset. reset. Because here's the thing when things start coming to you, and things start piling up on you, and things start coming in, and it's all about what you didn't get, all about what somebody did to you, or said about you, or, 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 or what they're not doing at the moment, then all of a sudden the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 8 that, 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 it's, that, 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 that our mind is set according to the flesh. Jesus never walked through this earth thinking about himself. He always thought about somebody else. Matter of fact, he went into places that nobody else would go into. So he could, he, he could heal their minds. He could heal them. And if Christ in us, if that is what truly is in us, the spirit of Christ, then our job is to reset our minds when the enemy tells us it's about us. Those of you who brought visitors, <laughs> well, listen, here we are sitting in 2021, and 2020 about this time, we were sitting in our house wishing we could be in church. Amen. Well, some of you probably think, I'm glad he went online. Shame on them. <laughs> Wishing we could get back into church and all of these things, all of a sudden, it didn't take long, did it, to switch our mind and poof. Straight to go. 
I'm talking, I'm talking the whole church. I'm talking the Methodist did it, the Baptist did it, the Presbyterian did it, the, the Catholic did it, the, the Pentecostal did it. I'm talking everybody just all of a sudden, boom, there was a reset going on and everybody started thinking up here. They got their mind off of themselves. And all of a sudden, they, guess what happened? The church started to expand and revival started to move in and God started healing. I'm telling you now, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing somebody talk about what God's doing. And now here we are clogged down again. Clogged all the way back down again. Went right back in the same groove and the same thinking and the same stuff. And, all, and got right back in the same deal. Told ourselves, I won't ever be the same. And we got clogged down. Why? Because we haven't reset. When you reset, uh, you take all of that stuff uh, and you dump it somewhere else. Uh, and so uh, that way uh, it doesn't clog you up. Because you start getting clogged up, all of a sudden your worship starts getting lazy. Everybody but Randy's, you just can't, can't calm him down. I mean... Praise God, it was like, whoo, somebody give me some room up in here. I'm about to bust a move. And now we got clogged all the way back up. It's just like. He's like, can't wait. You know, we're finally starting church. Back. Pastor, open it back up. Or oh, pastor didn't open anything. Matter of, fact, matter, of fact, matter of fact, let me clear this. The church never shut down. God spoke to me that the other day. I was driving down the road, and I said, I'm glad it's opened back up. And God said, hello. <laughs> Seriously. God said, uh, who shut me down? Yeah. I said, nobody. <laughs> Seriously, driving down the road. He said, that's right. Amen. The church never shut back down. Ecclesia, which is, means the meeting place, yeah. shut down. But the church, which is you and I, the temple inside of us, God has never shut down. Now we're in a phase, and now it is time to begin to move. We talked about the revival stirring, and the enemy has done everything he can do to clog us down. He's brought hurt feelings. He's brought in hurt words. He's brought family members who, 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 who's uh, come against you, and, and, and all, all of these things. And before you know it, you start thinking about all of these things that somebody's doing. If somebody doesn't like you, it's okay. you got a friend in Jesus, and when he's your friend, it doesn't no matter who doesn't like you, he sticks closer than a brother. My God, he can number the hairs on your head. I bet your friend can't number your hairs. He can. I said, we're always wondering about what, uh, trying to uh, get, get, get all of these things. Uh, why? Because, uh, because the enemy wants us thinking according to the flesh. In this month of March, I want to just challenge everybody. It's not just bring somebody, but I want to challenge everybody. I want to challenge you to, to a fast at least once a week. Whew, you talk about clearing your mind up. I mean, you walk by them ho-hos in the closet, and you go, mm, in the closet, I'm in the... <laughs> Not my closet. <laughs> in, the, in the pantry, you know, you open it. Yeah, never mind, it don't matter. Y'all don't believe me anyhow, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> walk by them ho-hos and look at them and say, you the devil. <laughs> I challenge you because the best way to free your mind is to get those things out of your mind. And you're fasting because your flesh wants to eat, but your spirit wants to live. And your spirit says, I'm sick and tired of walking around and elbowing with this boy. I need him to die. Get down on the ground and die. We got to kill our flesh and live in the spirit.
It's called reset. We reset our computers. We reset our phones. I mean, we reset everything, and it's called reset. You know why we can't reset our marriages? Is because we're too busy thinking about what we want. You know why we can't reset our families? It's because we're too busy thinking about what they did to us. Well, they shouldn't have done it. They probably shouldn't have done it. But do you think that you're doing what Jesus would have done? Do you think uh, that Jesus would have walked by the temple while they were selling things in there? And just, uh, <sighs> how dare you? Now listen, this is a spiritual thing, so do not take this out of context. He turned the tables over on them people. And took a broom. Now, don't go to your family's house and say, well, pastor said, I'm going to turn your table over. <laughs> he turned the tables over and took a broom, and the Bible said he run them out. <laughs> so what we need to do that way to the enemy when he comes in, we need to get him out of the room. If you walk into a place and the enemy has riled you up and your flesh has escalated to the top and your blood pressure is sky high and you got a headache and your belly's hurting because you're worrying and all of these things, can I tell you, I don't know how you would want to live with a joker like that. Why don't we just go ahead and cast him back to hell where he belongs and start living in the spirit. Just live in the spirit. The Bible says in Galatians, walk, in the, walk ye in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It didn't say the love of the flesh. It said the lust of the flesh. Because when you lust after something, you desire to have it. But when you love something, it is for better or worse. Hmm. Hey, look at your wives and say, yeah. Wives, look at your husband and say, yeah. I mean, this is the part where we think, well, you know, that was a long time ago. <laughs> he said, I went off and did what he did. He shouldn't have said what he said. Ooh, ain't you glad you showed up today? Y'all thought y'all was going to bite somebody and I was going to be cute and tell jokes? <laughs> I mean, the whole part about resetting our minds is we're not focused on. on him. When you get up the first thing in the morning, listen to me. This is not just a cliche. Well, you know, the preacher needs to word, read the word of God because he needs to know it so he can tell me. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm just the leader of this group. You're the muscle. I'm skinny. I'm short. You're the muscle. I got to make sure that I put it. I can't feed you anything, but I can spread a table. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to spread a table for you so that you get a hold of this so that you're not living controlled by your feelings. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your feelings is all jacked up on the devil. Now, those of you that didn't say it, repeat after me. Neighbor, your feelings are all jacked up on the devil. Well, see... The Apostle Paul said, if I can tell it in Rome, because see, Rome, I'm, I'm, I'm finished my story. Rome was that small little place that it took over the whole world. Nobody would have ever seen this coming. And Jesus was born not out of time, but in time. Galatians chapter 6 says that at the right time was Christ born of a virgin. Why? Because right in the middle of the Roman Empire, of any other times could God could have said, okay, I want him to be born. He waited until Rome conquered the empire 
and kings was in place because heaven wanted to come down and talk about a kingdom. Nobody would even understand how a kingdom would operate unless they saw it physically. Kings have dominion. It's, it's not a democracy in a kingdom. They have dominion. They have power. When a king says something, when a king says something, things begin to happen. And Jesus came at the right time, and they already seen how a kingdom began to work. And he said, the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God is like, and the kingdom of God is. And he started teaching the kingdom. And when we follow into a kingdom and we step into a kingdom, a kingdom is, 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 is now, it's what the king has said. When we follow into Christ, we got to understand what his words have said. This is how we walk. You mean preacher? You mean you ain't never had a bad day? You ain't never had a grudge? Yeah. <laughs> you think this word is just for you? No, God's been dealing with me for a while. Right. Because in order to go to the next level, we have to reset our minds. Amen. We have to reset our minds. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. There we are, I found it. If ye, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Now let me make this point right here real quick. It's the right hand. The right means authority. That's why he sat on the right hand. The, the Bible says that when King Saul become king, the Bible says that there was a tribe called Jabesh Gilead. Now, Jabesh Gilead happens to be the 13th tribe of Israel. I know there's only 12, but there was a 13th tribe of Israel. That's where we actually get the 13 stripes on the flag. I know they think, well, it's the 13 colonies, but listen, America is so patterned after God. That's why I know that the power of God is upon America. There was actually 13 disciples. One died and they voted Thomas in. If you die, somebody else going to get your place. Ooh, okay, there's a little too much. Uh. So, so 13 is not unlucky. I don't care what anybody tells you. I, I, don't, even, I don't need to get off on. Okay, listen, listen. Jabez Gilead come in and they went out and the Bible said that Nahash had surrounded him. And Nahash means serpent. And Nahash said, we got you surrounded and you ain't getting out. And Jabez Gilead is thinking, how in the world am I going to get out of this? I don't know. I got to get out of this. We don't know. And he said, I tell you what. He said, if you thrust out your right eyes, we'll let you live. If you will cut off your right thumbs, we will let you live. And you can be our servants and we'll feed you and we'll put you up in nice houses and we'll write you a uh, check every month and we'll bring you in and we'll make sure no matter what COVID has done. And we'll take care of you. And you can be prisoners for the rest of your life. And even though, even though we'll let you do whatever, but you got to pull out your right eye and you got to cut off your right thumb. And then you can come in. And so Jabez Gilead got to thinking, what are we going to do? Now, the people that they was affiliated with, Israel, is mad at them. Uh-oh. Anybody got any friends that's mad at you? You think, oh, better not call them. <laughs> well, I was going to reach out to them, but they deleted me on Facebook. <laughs> Anybody? See, see. And so, and so they thought, well, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and get a hold of King Saul. And so they wrote a letter to King Saul and said, Nahash has surrounded us. And they said that, that tomorrow, by the time the sun goes down, that if we have not committed unto them and give them our right eye and give them our right thumb, then we're going to have to be their slaves. Saul was upset. 
And he was mad at Jabez Gilead because they did some things that they shouldn't be doing. Did anybody ever have any friends that did some things that shouldn't be doing? I know y'all don't want to say it too loud. Anybody had family members that just went stupid? Got friends that just lost their mind? So now you're sitting off over here and you're thinking about how you ain't ever going to speak to them again. If they ever get in trouble, just let them try to call you. <laughs> Y'all don't think like that. I'm, that was a long time ago when I thought that. But anyway. They sent out a letter and King Saul got the letter. King Saul is from the tribe of Benjamin. And before he was born, he remembered his father's telling him a story that Benjamin probably wouldn't even be here right now if it hadn't been for Jabez Gilead. My God, I'm going somewhere. You probably got some friends uh, that, 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 that right now they may be in a crazy place, uh, but there was probably a place in your life that it had not been for them. Maybe some family members, if it had not been for them. See, he remembers that it had not been for Jabez Gilead that when the Benjaminites went out for war, the Bible said that, uh, that, uh, that the Philistines come in and they took all the women of the Benjamin, Benjaminites, took all the women and took them out and destroyed them and Benjamin had no more women and they began to weep because now they couldn't reproduce. Jabez Gilead says, we got 300 women who has never been touched. We're going to give them to Benjamin so that they can remain Benjamin. Listen, listen. So the Bible says that because of that, then Saul was born. So now he's thinking what had happened. Now he's going back. Listen, now he's going back and he's realizing that he wouldn't even have been here. See, some of you have got to realize and understand that if you don't reset your mind, you will forget the important things that God has did for you on the way because right now, you I don't know who I'm talking to, but right now you're going through a devastating moment and all you can think about is what somebody said to you. I'll just do a Dr. Phil up in here this morning. <laughs> and her mind's clogged up. Amen. Saul went out and he, he talked to all the people and he told them what they're going to do and they're still mad. But I don't know if I want to help them bunch of people over there. You know what they did last time. I don't think they changed. They're going to have to prove they changed. Bake me a chocolate cake. Hmm. You know what Saul did? He went out and found the biggest cow he could find. He cut him up in pieces. I mean, cut this cow up in pieces. And he said it, UPS, right to their door. And he said a letter. And he said, if you don't follow me by tomorrow, this is going to be you. Whew, you talking about lighting a fire. I forgot. Yeah, I don't care what they did. I'm done. <laughs> He said, these were our brothers and this is covenant and we don't lead people. I need to tell life changers right now. You are covenant brothers and sisters and your job is not to act like the world and talk like the world and be mad like the world. My God, somebody give God a crazy praise in here this morning. Your job ain't to act like the world, become like the world, start talking like the world, posting like the world, uh, being mad like the world. Uh, that's not your job. Uh, the, uh, Saul said we are covenant brothers and sisters, uh, and our brother is in trouble, and we're going to reach out, and we're going to help them. Uh, and no matter where our feelings is, uh, and no matter where we're at, we're going to reset our mind. Preacher, I don't know what you got in Branson, but go back. Get some more. We're going to reset our mind. See, the enemy wanted them to be like that, but he wanted to remove their right eye, their vision. Then he wanted to remove the right thumb. 
So that way, when they go to hold a sword, they can't grip it. And then if they hold a sword and point it at you, you can knock it out of their hand real easy. So he wanted to take their vision and their ability to fight. And don't you know that the enemy wants you to come to church, but he wants to take your vision and your ability to fight him. He wants you to come. He wants you to shout. He wants you to clap. He wants you to pay tithes. He wants you to get in the altar. He wants you to give it to missionaries. He wants you to help King's kids. He wants you all of those things. He wants you to be a good life changer, but he wants you to be half blind, and he wants you to not be able to hold a sword good. And the reason why he wanted to write because it was an identity. Write means authority. I got a message I'll preach later on about uh, I won't <coughs> going there, but there was an army who lost their right arms and they was trained to fight left handed and it's called left handed warriors. And I, 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 I'll deal with that later. But listen, here they are sending out a letter to somebody that they know has kicked them out. See, uh, 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 if you read the Bible, the Bible said that they removed Jabez Gilead because they didn't show up to a meeting, basically. <laughs> Y'all sitting there thinking, oh, they're gone. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. They were supposed to have been there and they didn't show up, so they got mad and they cut them off. <clears throat> By this time, you got one Israel now is split into two kingdoms. Now you got a north and a south. You got Judah and you got Israel. You got already got it fighting. Amen. I mean, now you have us, and I mean, here we are. We're life changers. There, there, there's, uh, there, 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 there's churches all over. And you think that the war with the north and the south just happened? No, because we are so identical to Israel and to the kingdom of God that everything that has happened is moving in America. But can I tell you that God that moved in didn't quit? He didn't fail? And the God that's moving now isn't going to quit? He isn't going to fail? He is an almighty God? He did it then and he'll do it now? We got to reset our mind. got to reset our mind. We got to set our mind on things above, not on things here on the earth. Now, I know you shouldn't be a doormat and people shouldn't walk all over you. I understand that. But in the times when you feel like a doormat, just bloop. <laughs> well, it ain't that easy, preacher. Well, if you become a master of it, <laughs> It don't take as long. Amen. If you become somebody who does it all the time, you know the steps. It doesn't take as long. You just go right through it. But what happens is, is we get We get to the point where we're tired of always having to be the strong one. Why do I always have to be the one that forgives, Pastor? Why do I always have to say, I'm sorry? I know I must be preaching good because I'm stepping on somebody. It's hard to shout. I mean, it's just. And the enemy has got us in a position. And we're sitting there looking at our, our phones, our iPhones, and it's not working properly. And we know we got to reset it, but we just don't have time. <laughs> if I have to reset it, it means I can't get on it and scroll Facebook. Oh, come on, come on. If I have to reset it, I can't check my emails. What if somebody calls me? Dear God. <laughs> Listen, I know it's all funny. But, it, but in the spirit, it's the truth. Yes, yes. Because when we reset, we just don't walk into a closet like Clark Kent. <laughs> listen, listen, that's what the Holy Ghost does. It'll transform you. The Holy Ghost is the phone booth. You walk in, boom. You walk out, boom. 
faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> but when you reset, it takes some time. And the reason why the church isn't taking the time to reset is because they're too busy thinking that they matter to a world who they are going to hell in a handbasket if they don't reset their minds and pull their thinking out of it. The blind lead the blind and they all fall in a ditch. Got a blind church. Man, they look good. They got the right Bible. They got good programs. Good looking pastor. <laughs> I heard Cody go. <laughs> but man, they're blind as a bat. They're mad at the world. Don't get their cornbread wrong on Sunday morning. Uh -uh. <laughs> Don't give them sweet tea when they ask for unsweet tea, and then they put sweetener in it, and it's really sweet. And I mean, they're just... They got workers. They won't even go to church. And they hate working on Sunday because they got these stiff necked staunch Christian people who gets out of church on Sunday and comes to the restaurant and you can't do nothing right. Well, I was in church and they're serving you and thinking, I'm glad I didn't go to church with you. Ooh, man, I am on it today. Ooh, look, look at your neighbor and say, pastor's preaching it. Oh, y'all say it like y'all mean it. <laughs> it's all right. I come with an amen built in me. You can walk out if you want to. I done got your money. <laughs> Anna, come to the piano, please. They're going to stone me in a minute. Musicians, would you come? Y'all, there, there's some stuff out of this reset series that God has downloaded. I'm going to pull out. Listen. Listen. We cannot keep functioning. Matter of fact, we won't. I mean, my mom's iPhone got so backed up one time you could turn it on and that was it. That was it. You couldn't make a phone call. You couldn't make a text message. You couldn't go. You couldn't do nothing. It just shut down. But it turned on. We come to church. And we get turned on. We never take the time to plug in, get connected to the router. Turn the phone off to where it's in black mode and just sit. Amen. You don't necessarily have to do this in church. You know, some of us need to do it at home. Some of us get so clogged up, we need to do it every other day. I'm talking about just, just, just coming to that place where you just unplug from everything else. And you reset. This morning, we have to reset our mind. We'll talk about reset our heart later. But listen, right now, we have to reset our mind. This is where the battlefield's coming in. This is where we can't get over what happened 10 years ago. I had a lady stand in my line one time, and, and, and I, I was in Bentonville, Arkansas. She stood in my line. She said, Preacher, I got a problem. I said, Okay. She said, My ex husband. I'm just still so mad at him. I said, Okay, ma'am. I'm, 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 I'm really sorry. I said, I said, Are you just recently divorced? She goes, Yeah, but not to him. Okay. 
She said, we've been, I, I, I've been divorced from him for 25 years. And when I got talking to her, she'd been married three times after that. And the marriages kept failing and kept failing and kept failing because what happened over here and 25 years ago, she couldn't reset. Listen. If we do not learn how to reset now, while the Holy Ghost is prevalent and in this place and on America, revival has called out America's name. And if we want to see the full repercussion of revival, we got to reset our minds. can't go on like this any longer. All over this building, just stand to your feet for a minute. <laughs> we tell all our friends and our families and whoever will listen, we just want it fixed. But we ain't taking the time to reset. All over this building here this morning, you're not here by accident. I'm telling you, when I pray every week and every morning, I want, I want the people to hear that God needs to hear. When the people logs on, I want the people to hear it that needs to hear. You are not here by accident. Your marriage has hit a brick wall. Your relationship with your family has hit a brick wall. Your ministry that God has put in your life has hit a brick wall. And you're just out of place and you're sitting on the battlefield and you're all alone. You got one eye out. You got one thumb missing. Whatever comes to this side, you never see. You only see this side. You hold a sword and you got the stance and everything looks good. But just a small mosquito could fly by and hit that sword and knock it out of your hand because there's no thumb to grip. You keep coming to church. You're trying to fight. You're trying to see. The story behind that is, is Saul showed up. King Saul did actually do some good. He showed up. Matter of fact, he sent to Nahash, and he said, by the time the sun gets hot, I'll be there. He showed up. Listen. Whatever you're dealing with right now, all over this building, just clear your mind. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how long back it goes. If you want, if you truly want healing and to move on this morning, you truly want all over this building. I'm talking all over this building. Men, women, ladies, boys, all over this building. You truly want to move past this. You've dealt with it long enough. Listen, there's an anointing here this morning. I'm telling you right, there is an anointing here this morning. Well, I'm just not one of those that comes to the front, preacher. Well, it's okay. You can stay back there. But on the count of three, make me a line right here. One, two, three. Come on. I'm moving past this. I'm moving past this. If we got to line up behind one another, that's fine. I just need to be able to get to you to lay my hands on you. We're going to get past this. It's blocking me. I've been needing to reset for a while. It's blocking me.
in this line, you're in this line, I just want you to raise your hands, raise them to heaven right now. Raise them to heaven right now. I'll be there in a minute, but I want him to show up. I can't do anything. He can't, and he's here right now.